and how far monetary policy tightening from central banks will go. In the United States, the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, rose by 0.85%. The S&P 500 climbed 0.4%, while the tech-heavy Nasdaq, uh, that's the uh, Nasdaq Composite, ended the day higher by 0.71%. In Europe, the UK's FTSE 100 gained 0.64%, while Germany's uh, DAX index jumped by 0.19%, while uh, France's uh, CAC index that was up by 0.69%. Now, across Asia-Pacific, markets in the region ended mostly higher, uh, though uh, Jap Japan's uh, main market index was dragged down by a broad weakness in uh, food and electronic stocks. In Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index climbed by 1.04%, while China's Shanghai Composite, that index gained 1.01%, while Japan's Nikkei 225 dropped by 1.25%. And back here at the unlisted securities market, the NASD OTC Exchange Security Index uh, recorded a 1.21% uh, loss for the week. At the same time, the market capitalization fell by 11.45 uh, billion now to close the week at 927.53 uh, billion now due to sell pressure by investors. Similarly, the total value of securities traded during the week it, uh, decreased by 52.74%, while total volume of securities traded on the exchange rose by more than 2,600% week on week. And while Geofluids was the loan gainer and the most traded security on the NASD OTC market for the week, while uh, Niger Delta Exploration and Production uh, led four other decliners. And joining us now is Mr. Waride Longe, Managing Director, NASD OTC Exchange. Uh, Happy New Year, great to have you. Thank you, Happy New Year. And uh, obviously, uh, 2022, quite a, an interesting year, Very tough much. year for, Very much. you know, most uh, uh, asset classes, yes. you know, globally. And uh, obviously, I know the NESD, you know, had a story in 2022. What was it? So, um, our story was a story of mixed performance. Um, our capitalization spiked, um, I would say, by one event. Um, but it didn't really have an impact on the velocity of trading because it was a specialized listing. Um, but having said that, I mean, I think that there were some there were, there were diverse, there were diverse gains that we could point to. There were lots, a, a lot of uh, traditional securities which um, dominated the NESD in the past um, did have some competition with new securities um, being traded. Um, you spoke about geofluids. Um, that's put on a strong showing towards the end of the year. So that's the encouragement we have. More securities are being traded. More, a lot of the previously inactive securities are coming to the fore. Um, one other thing that um, we were positive about is the fact that um, with the capitalization going up, um, we would see that um, there may be keener interest from the institutional investor community. So we look forward to that. I'm talking about, you know, capitalization. It did cross one trillion. One trillion. And that was uh, May, and we, we've seen, you know. Yeah, we've come back to below one trillion, but I think we'll push back there. I mean, I think it's really the technical experience of uh, people uh, taking, investors taking profits. Some of our prominent companies um, issued some significant corporate actions on the back of which investors have thought to take profits. You know, so it's just a normal... Uh, but what trillion was a... That was a big, you know, feat. How, how did you get there? <laughs> well, like I said, there was one event. Um, we're proud of it, but um, we think we need to look beyond it. I mean, there's a major listing of over 360 billion. You know, so that just took us over the um, one trillion mark. But um, we're hoping to do a lot more that diversifies our um, trading experience and the growth of our market. And I'm talking about, you know, trading experience. Uh, let's uh, look at the regulatory, you know, angle. How did that, you know, shape investor sentiment in 2022? So um, some key, some key um, introductions. I think the crowdfunding um, regulation was introduced in late 2021. So people are, I mean, so um, market participants uh, trying to get their, ha their heads around that. But I think that the crowdfunding regulation is somewhat limited because of the cap. I mean, and of course, that's advisedly done so that um, we don't experience a lot of what has made the regulation come into place. 
um, some fraudulent uh, offers that have come to the market. So the regulatory SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, is trying to ensure that people are not overexposed. I mean, and so entities that are registered for crowdfunding um, offers are capped, and uh, we see how they perform, and then maybe they can um, increase their offer. But I think for us, I mean, uh, we've had a, we've had a, what's it called? Um, we've had a, we've had some chestnuts in the fire. Um, we've had something that we've been prospecting on the digital side. We think that's going to come to fruition in 2023. Because if you look at it carefully, there's a new demography of investors. And that demography um, does not, is not as starchy as my own generation. Everything is done on the fly. Everything is done on devices. We need to be able to include that demography in the markets of today. So I think that across board in the capital markets, that direction is being pointed to, you know, but um, we must bring the content that um, drives on that market. So we're really looking, the digital, I mean, sorry, digital assets, digital and virtual assets regulation was issued by the Securities and Exchange Commission um, last year. So that's, that I think is an initiative that um, is open for exploration in this period. What that does particularly is it aids what you may call fractionalization. Um, retail investors can be onboarded. The new demography I speak about can also come onto the market. So think about if you fractionalize, so to say, if you make, a, if you make a, a, an infrastructure asset open to retail investors in a very efficient way where people can subscribe all over the world across jurisdictions, that can be a significant game changer. And that means you can own, you know, a portion yes. of, uh, of, a, of a major, yes. you know, asset class. So exactly. uh, how far have you gone, you know, obviously the year just started, yes. but how far has that gone, you know, bringing the, the, the exchange to a digital platform? Well, without uh, disclosing too much, we would say to you, watch to see what may happen watch before the space. end of this quarter. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, now, so which sectors uh, or stocks have investors found the most, you know, valuable? Now, it's a bit, um, so it's, it's, um, it's a bit narrow. I mean, um, so the OTC markets, you take what has come. But um, we are trying to shape the direction now. So the stocks that people have traditionally traded have been in FMCG um, and um, financial services and also oil and gas. Um, but increasingly, we're beginning to see interest in some very unorthodox sectors, something like the entertainment industry. Um, I don't think that we've found the formula to tap into that market. We want to be able to incubate talent because that's really a very positive area. Nigerian culture, Nigerian talent. It's just running free. There's no, there are no guardrails taking them to um, scale. Um, where they really could go to, you know. So you see the traditional um, top artists pulling huge crowds. How do you trap those revenue streams to help? I mean, for Nigerians to invest in, they would readily invest in that in that in that endeavor. So that thinking has to be done to bring those kind of. Um, I, saw, to the I saw a report of the you know, cinema revenue for 2022. It yes. made Close to a billion, or if, if not a billion. Why isn't that on our market? You know, Naira. <laughs> and that, and Why obviously, isn't that on our we've seen, you know, movie producers exactly. go around looking for, you know, investment, you know, to, to uh, bring out, you know, those uh, blockbuster movies. Yes. So we, we think that um, we, we are arriving at the formula to tap into that, into that endeavor. You know, so that's what's going to be more exciting. So when you say what's exciting today, what's exciting today won't be what is exciting tomorrow. I can guarantee you that. All right, looking at the market cap at the NASD OTC uh, market, where do you see it in 2023? Well, um, so there's a wish and then there's the reality. reality. So I think that we've, what we've done is that we've um, bought the seeds that we're going to plant to get to where we're going. You know, so we would use the first two quarters really to plant the seeds and begin to water them. We think that by the end of the year, we would probably have moved to maybe, I'd say, 
no less than a 30% gain. That's our, that's our optimism. But I think they were planting the seeds for perhaps the um, year ahead. You know, this is a year that is supposed to change our fortunes. Would lay all the um, lay all the planning, lay all the um, arrangements and partnering, and we would see stellar growth towards the end of the year. I would say, we want to be two trillion this year. Two trillion. We want to be. Want to be. Yeah. All right. I'm interested to see how that yeah. you know plays out. But you know, obviously, it's an election year, and obviously next month, you know, the we gear up for mm. you know the yes. the elections, and yes. obviously, this does uh, impact investor sentiment yes what are you expecting so i think that um, there's a lot of noise and you have to drown out the noise and keep your eye on the ball um there's been so much that has been planted just like we're trying to plant in the nigerian space maybe it hasn't been as coordinated as it should be um so I believe that the pressure for performance for anyone who comes into office is so strong that um, you would see that they would take off pretty rapidly. There are challenges. I mean, we can't go, we can't ignore those challenges. And they're very deep challenges, uh, security, debt profile, um, government revenue, and all of that. But I think that it takes a um, person who has his head properly oriented to just look around our environment and see all this. I mean, like, there are quite a few things that we'll see before the end of January. I mean, there's things that we're looking forward to. We hear about the refinery in um, uh, uh, Ekbe um, coming on stream before the end of this uh, month. Um, there's the Lagos Rail that is also coming on stream. There's the Mortar Rice Mill as well. You know, so there, and then and there are many other things across the country. Um, we need to tap into these things and bring them to play in the economy. They're kind of silent and they don't contribute in a quantum way. So you need those quantum projects. And those quantum projects are going to begin to seed in 2023. So we're not, we're not, we're not pessimistic about the chances. I think they were very bullish about Nigerian chances, but we need to also be able to speak to, uh, um, to those who are watching the Nigerian economy and give them the confidence to assure them that um, your investment will yield good, good results and we will adhere to contracts and we can both build um, to a, a, a good area. And obviously, talking about the new government, where would you like them to focus on? Um, we have to cut waste. Um, I know that everyone has spoken about um, fuel subsidy. I mean, it's, what's, what is going on doesn't make sense at all. So that has to be dealt with, you know, and um, I know that it is difficult. It's a trust issue. I have a pet idea that says that you should put money in Nigeria's po Nigerians' pockets, you know. Um, determine how many we are put money in our pockets and say to us, um, after this, um, there's going to, we're, we're putting money in your pockets because we want to, we have to free petrol. Because people don't believe that they're going to use the money for anything. So if you have cash transfers that cool people down for six months, perhaps, you know, after that, we, I mean, after having this deal with the Nigerian people, we are going to take our hands off petroleum subsidy. But think about it. All of this subsidy that you have been um, applying to petrol, if you capped it at a certain level, right, and you then are able to free the um, market for, the pet for petrol to sell, or well, for petroleum products to sell at um, their due price, um, I think that you would have solved the problem to a certain degree because what people do not believe is that once, once you remove the subsidy and you say you're going to translate it, which has happened all the time, we're going to translate it into, into something else. It never works, you know? So if you say to me that you've moved sub, petrol subsidy and you improve the transportation system demonstrably, that makes sense to me. So that deal has to happen. The deal for power also has to happen. I mean, uh, reflective tariffs on power. You know, um, so I think uh, quite a few things. Power and subsidy. Quite a few <laughs> things. I mean, and of course, um, 
we need to unbundle some of the government's assets, right. which can be put on our markets. I mean, we can get private investors. Infrastructure is important, but how you finance it sustainably is also important. I and think that uh, we can... Also, uh, I, I believe uh, the LCCI also recommended you know, that equity financing. And yes. That would be great. We can work with government that. on that. That would be great to see that actually happen. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Waride Longe, Managing Director at NESD OTC. Thank you for uh, giving us your perspective. And My obviously, pleasure. we, we hope you. for a profitable year. Yes, indeed. And a productive year. Too. Very productive. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. All right, we'll take a break now when we come back. We we'll drill down on the NGX, that's equities market. Uh, that's in a moment to stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Capital Market Live on Channel Television. And uh, back here, the domestic stock market uh, was a uh, bullish sentiment returned there as investors renewed interest in bellwether stocks on the Nigerian Exchange Limited. The all-share index of listed equities soared by 2.5% week on week, uh, way above the 52,000 uh, point level. Now, join us is uh, Mr. Dolakwa Shiru, Managing Director of Interstate Securities. Join us right here in the studio. Great to have you and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Nice having, you, having me around. Yeah. So, obviously, 2022, quite an interesting year for the equities market. You know, we saw rate hikes, you know, by most central bankers, you know, globally, even right here in Nigeria. But the NGX, the equities market, still performed. Yes. What kind of magic is that? <laughs> it wasn't magic. There are simple reasons. We, we are, I am interested that I projected that the first six months of 2022 were very, very um, bullish for the market, and the second half will be bearish. But what happened was that towards the last two months of 2022, November and December, we saw what was basically called a Santa Claus rally. And that was because a lot of people felt that the market between July and October, that the stock prices had reached, the, had, had bottomed out, and in that side to look at value in the prices, that that most of the stocks are now below the interest rate value. So investors decided to mop up those stocks. Also, in anticipation of 2023, when you will start seeing final year results of of many companies, and the, and the projection is that many companies will, will, will declare bumper profits, and also the fact that even with the rate hikes, yes. And also with the fact that, no, the, the, our, the stocks really went down during that period. But things are, and a lot of people are also looking at, at the fact that by, in the, in, in, historically, if a president should hand over to another president and everything runs out well, the market usually rallies. So the market rewards the, the, the nation, in short, for making sure that there was a peaceful election, peaceful transition from one person to another person. So that's why. And also, we also feel that there's, there's, there are three major elephants in the room going forward. And we feel that the new president, for whatever party he comes from, will address those issues. Number one is FX. Number two is either a partial or a full most likely going to be partial, removal of first subsidy, and also a successful election. If those three things come to play positively, then this year will be another bumper year for the Nigerian capital market. That would be quite interesting yeah. to see. But, you know, looking at um, an elect, this is obviously an election year, what kind of stocks actually shine in an election year? There's some stocks, first of all, um, I, I normally look at stocks that are in critical sectors of, sectors of the economy. And also you find that one of the reasons why the market did so well last year is that most of the large cap stocks, a lot of people ran there for safety. So you see stocks in the telcos, like a lot of people ran to Airtel, a lot of people ran to MTL stocks, a lot of people ran to Sepla, because Sepla is a company that the income is in USD. So it's always, in this kind of economy, it's always, it's always good to invest in a company that earns FX. And the fact that Airtel is... Airtel is to a large extent dual listed too. A lot of investors, because of the FX issues, also sought refuge, refuge to, to, so to speak, in those stocks, along with also MTN, because MTN is a clear market leader in the tel telco sector. And with the fact that MTN is merging, moving from a telco to a techco, basically entering into the fintech space. A lot of people saw promise there. So those are kind of stocks. And Dangote Cement. Dangote Cement is, is, I mean, the market share is about 60%. So out of every 10 bags of cement in Nigeria, six belongs with Dangote. So you can't go wrong with cement. So a lot of people went to those kind of stocks for safety. And they're the large cap stocks. These stocks I mentioned, most of them are, the market cap is well above 1 trillion naira. So those are the kind of those are the stocks that held the market and made it positive last year. 
and obviously, you know, during the election, some sectors are going to get attention. Yes, yeah, going to get what attention. sectors are that going to be? Um, during the election, let's look at the, the banking sector. I, I'm, very, I'm very confident in what I call Fugas, those are tier one banks. That's, I always look at First Bank, UBA, G, G, GT. And Zenith and Access Bank because they're what they call what Americans call too big to fail, too big to save. Those five stocks, those tier one, those five stocks I mentioned, they they control about together they control about over 60 percent of the total deposits in the banking system. 60 percent of over 60 percent of, of the loan books, over 60 percent of total deposit, over 60 percent of. Um, um, total assets, so they're too big to fail. So a lot of people seek refuge also in tier one banks. All right, you did uh, mention the Q4 earnings. You did, you know, you are expecting, you know, bumper earnings for uh, the fourth quarter of 2022. But let's uh, move over now to the first quarter of 2023. What are you expecting for earnings? Yeah, um, for earnings, first of all, I'll see. First of all, m our outlook for Q1 is that is, is exercise caution. You understand? But I feel that some of, some, of, some of the earnings or good earnings track record for last year will also trickle into, uh, trickle into Q1. So I see that the, the, my favorites will still also do well. But my, my issue is that how well we were able to beat the record for Q, the corresponding period last year significantly or just marginally. So that's what we're watching out for. All right. We'll yeah. definitely be watching out for those um, uh, earnings. But, you know, obviously it was a bullish week, you know, this week. Are we expecting profit taking? next week or this bull um, sentiment will continue usually a bull run doesn't last more than 10 trading days and then people will take profit and they go up again so the market doesn't just go straight like that the market goes in ups and downs so we'll see profit taking but i think the market will generally trend upwards it will trend upwards. Yeah, so there'll be a blip or blips but the up, there'll be an upward trend and who, it, who do you see so sometime in this quarter to it will peak because once it just starts coming out or about to come out, it, it, it will pick and it will just... It will and, and obviously, yeah. I know your, your clients, you know, always have their picks. Yeah. What are you recommending, you know, for next week? Hmm. Right now, a lot of stocks are really high. So the, the policy is this, or the, the, the rule of thumb is this, buy low, sell high. So anybody that's coming now is a bit late for the party because a lot of stocks are risen far above what they should be. So people bought more demand of these stocks. But, that, but they're always yeah. laggards. Yeah, they're always laggards. They're always laggards. Yeah. So what about that? The, big, the, the, the blue chips always move first than the others. So, for example, I'm going to go to, after the full gap tier one banks, the value is in other banking, um, banking sector stocks, the tier two banks. So a lot of people start looking at those banking stocks that maybe one naira, two naira, you understand, and make them. So I'll look at Fidelity, for example. Fidelity is on its way to ultimately becoming a tier one bank. I'll look at Fidelity, I'll look at FCMB, I'll consider those ones for, I mean, outside the tier one banks, based on the prices now. Yeah. Based on price. So yeah. we can expect, you know, yeah. bullish sentiment for yeah. next week yes. to continue. Yes. All right, what about the end of 2023? Because obviously it's an election year. And it mostly, we've seen all the election years, you know, uh, investors get, you know, kind of weak. You will see weak sentiment from investors. But obviously, this one is already looking okay, bullish. I'll, I'll tell you of. why. Because, for example, last year, about 80% of total transactions done on the NGX was from domestic investors. To a large extent, the, for, the FPIs, foreign portfolio investors, were out of the market for obvious reasons, as at FX. If those three things I mentioned come out positively, they'll come back they'll come back on mass. So they, 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 do, they have what they call a domino, domino effect. Once they leave the market, they all live together. Once they come back, they all come back together. So what we're anticipating is that now that we've already started to corner most of these stocks that we buy for our clients, when they come in, we'll now offload it to them. So we can expect. Yeah, so <laughs> more, my point is that my point is that if all this is come to pass, we we'll see if, 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 to a large extent the market will be very bullish this year. And once you can, do, once hope, you can go around do hope all FX, those things come to uh, yeah, FX. Once you can sort, once there's FX stability, once they can either partial or food, most likely partial because a food a food regulation of of the of the of petroleum sector, um, removes, food subsidy remover, it will, it will dislocate the economy. So it's going to be most likely partial. Then also successful elections also. With that, investors will come in and start buying stocks again. So we'll all see right. another rally. All right. but, but all this are up in the air until, until, it, actually uh, happens. until it actually happens. Yeah. All right, let's hope uh, it actually happens you know, yeah. going forward. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Dolakwa Ashiru, Managing Director, Interstate Securities. It was great having your perspective you. today. All right, thank you so much uh, for watching. Let's uh, get a brief uh, outlook for uh, next week. Then for T-Bills market, we see yields are expected to rise from current levels amid anticipated a lower liquidity in the system. Moving on to the bonds 
uh, market uh, expectations uh, that uh, publication of FGN bond issuance calendar for Q1 and uh, Q2, uh, Q1 expect to influence investor uh, sentiment. So we've seen uh, bullish sentiment possible in the equities uh, market and as investors position uh, for the full year dividend uh, declarations for 2022. And uh, that's uh, the show today. Thank you so much uh, for watching. I'm Ladi Williams. I'll see you next Saturday. Thank you so much.